So welcome, welcome, got some Sunday news for you today. If you haven't seen the video that I've just released, I'll leave it linked above. Looks like I'm doing some karate. Apt really, isn't it, when we're talking about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, yeah, I know it's Rangers, calm your tits. Um, so yeah, bit of Sunday news. Power Rangers reboot is in the works with the creator of It's the End of the Effing World. Um, if you haven't seen that, it's amazing. Like, it's genuinely, utterly fantastic. Uh, so, this is good, but it's not also what the title uh, leads you to believe, if that makes sense. So, let's get into it, and then I'll kind of tell you why, and you'll see why as well. So, uh, it, this time, the feature is in Paramount's hands. Now, that's important, and we'll get to that in a second. It's Morphin Time for Jonathan Entwistle, which is the creator of The End of the Effing World. Uh, the filmmaker, perhaps best known for creating Netflix series The End of the Effing World, is taking on Power Rangers, a new version of the colourful family adventure franchise, this time set up at Paramount Pictures. But it's not. Again, just remember, it's not what you think. Okay. Entwistle is in early negotiations. It's not, it's not, it's not confirmed. Early negotiations to direct a new feature project that would reboot the title. Now, Rangers was a 90s TV series and global market franchise, initially called the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, that used footage from a Japanese children's show. Uh, and then it was like dubbed over, Saban and things like that. He just like hacked it together. Uh, the premise involved a group of kids who became superheroes, each with his or her own colourful coordinated outfit and matching helmet. The show first aired on Fox Kids, then in 2000s on Disney's own channels. Uh, a movie also hit theatres in 1995. Now, Lionsgate produced the most recent iteration of the Power Rangers, which was a feature in 2017 that rebooted the title, making it less kid-friendly and giving it a more brooding, young adult edge. Not overly sure why, but then not overly sure who this is going to be aimed at either, because that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it's, it's like of its time. I mean, the fact that, remember, you know, it's initially, it was using footage from a Japanese children's show, for God's sake. Like, where are you going to go with this? Seriously. You know, young adult or, or hard R reboot, like, it's just, it doesn't really make any sense now. Not in this current climate of movies and uh, Hollywood. Now, the movie bombed, grossing only $142 million worldwide on a budget of around $100 million, which means... Given marketing, 200 odd million, uh, plus theatre cuts and things like that, it this lost, well, I don't know, at the very least, 60 million plus more. Uh, plans for a series of films scrapped. Now it's in Paramount's court. The Rangers is getting rebooted once more in a way that hopes to bring the franchise to its roots. Interesting. Because again, who's this for? At this point in time, who is this going to be for? It's taking it back to it, back to its roots, but for who? Because those that remember its roots, you know, I mean, they're old now. <laughs> you know, they're like thirties and things like that. Like for God's sake, seriously. Uh, and then back to the so basically, the story is said to involve a time travel element that brings the kids to the nineteen nineties, and in Back to the Future fashion, they have to find a way to get back to their present. That was in none of the other stuff. What the hell is that? Seriously, what what the hell is that? Uh, Patrick Burley, who wrote the upcoming Peter Rabbit 2, The Runway, or The Runaway, is penning the script. He's not really done too much else, so don't really care about him. Hasbro, now this is where it gets interesting. Hasbro, which bought the property from creator Haim or Harm Saban in 2018, is producing the feature via its film arc, All Spark Pictures. Now, this is the interesting thing, because it's not in Paramount's court. Paramount is just distributing it. The creators of it is actually Hasbro, the owners of it, the guys who make the toys. So on the surface, Entwistle is an outside-the-box choice for the shiny franchise, as his Netflix show is dark and envelope-pushing, about opposite of what you can get for a Hasbro property. The show, a dark comedy that he directed and executive produced that debuted its second season in November, told of the growing friendship between a teenage boy who believes he is a sociopath and is looking for a person to kill, and a girl who persuades him to ditch their homes for a road trip. Entwistle is currently in post on I'm Not Okay With This, another Netflix show he co-created uh, and executive produced and directed, also teenage-centric, not okay, 
focuses on a girl dealing with high school life, her budding sexuality, and superpowers. But the director, rep by CAA and Grandview, has shown he has a grasp on the voice of the younger generation, which execs hope will translate into something unique and appealing on screen. But to me, ladies and gents, that just sounds like they're doing the same thing, but they don't want to announce it yet. Lionsgate produced and released uh, a feature in 2017 that rebooted the title, making it less kid-friendly and giving it a more brooding young adult edge. This is all this guy does. Now, it doesn't mean that he's a one-trick pony. And yes, of absolutely, can he do other things? Yeah, of course he can. And is the Hollywood Reporter right in saying that he clearly understands and uh, can use his entertainment as a vehicle for the voice of younger uh, audiences and things like that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, they are right. But I would hazard a guess this isn't what that's going to be. You know, I think this will be basically a similar dark-ish sort of reboot. Um, you know, you can do Back to the Future and things like that. Because, again, remember, right, like, who is this going to be for? Because the, the, the kids that originally watched this are now late 20s. Late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, right? Original kids of the 90s that watch this so if this is going to be aimed at kids again they're not going to be bothered about it right and they already proved that trying to get young adults into the last one didn't really make too much sense either so if you aim it at a not a hard r but you know new audience plus appealing to the original people because those original people that watch that would probably be watching end of the effing world and loving it, like absolutely loving it, right? So I think that's what they're going to be doing, but I just don't think they want to announce that because, of course, hearing that it's going to be similar to 2017's one is not going to sell. Uh, that's pretty bad marketing. I'm sure you can all agree with that. Now, the other interesting part of this is that, yes, The Hollywood Reporter has um, seemingly... They, 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 they haven't been completely transparent right it's not paramount paramount are not producing it paramount are not making it paramount are just the distributors now who else does paramount uh what, what else do they distribute oh gi joe oh transformers does this look like hasbro is setting up a shared universe because we've had a massive stalling on anything transformers for a real long time a real long time like, ridiculous amount of time. Now, I, I'm fairly certain, you know, we, we've not had anything to do. I don't, I don't follow G.I. Joe because I don't care about it. But we haven't had anything about G.I. Joe for a while. There's been no specific news about it. We've heard only just recently, in the last couple of days, some rumours of uh, the Bumblebee follow-up. Now, I think what we're going to be doing with time travel, with, with the Rangers, the, the Mighty Morphin Lycra wearing Rangers... I reckon we're going to get a blend. I think we're going to... That's what we're going to wrap into. Some kind of Hasbro shared universe. And on, on face value, fine. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's see. I'm a massive fan of all of these toys. Huge Transformers fan. Back in the day. Not not so much anymore, of course. Um, but I will be very, very intrigued to see what happens. Now, my, my hot prediction is that this is building to a Hasbro shared universe. Which has kind of long been in the works. But I think this now moves it even further all smart pictures that's what they're going to be doing they're going to be making these movies distributing via paramount it's not in paramount's hands specifically like they say here paramount's the distributor You've got to remember that it's hasbro that's making this now do you think that that's a good thing or a bad thing that hasbro is making their own movies because of course remember right and this is important is that hasbro are they going to be the ones selling the toys for this so does that does that make for a good thing or a bad thing if Hasbro are the ones making the movie? Do you think they will sacrifice story for potential toy product sales? Which everyone who knows anything about movies and merchandise, merchandise makes more money than movies. That's just how it is. And if Hasbro are the ones which own the license to it, you could be damn sure they're going to be trying to push for some money off the back end. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this though down below in the comment section. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please do show me by giving it a like and a share. It really does help me out. Um, I will say this though, again, people that watch the original, that's that's the ones I want to hear the opinion of, right? Is this anything that you're interested in? And what would they have to do to get you interested? Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. H. Take care.